Today I'm going to provide a quick demonstration of the R2 Digital Library. I'm going to start out with the patron facing features and talk about some of the benefits to your patrons with the R2 Digital Library and what their experience will look like as they are using the platform. And then at the end, I'll flip over to the administrative side. I think almost everyone on this webinar has administrative credentials and we'll take a look at some of the best ways um, to customize and use the platform. So um, just to get started here, if you're not aware, our two digital library, it is a health sciences ebook database, and it is built with custom software that is specialized for health sciences. So you'll see that as we go through the demo, um, but R2 does provide quick and easy access to thousands of ebooks um, from the leading health sciences publishers. And we're unique in that we bring them all together to work as a database on one platform. So r2library.com is the URL. If you um, have a trial going or have an active collection, you just wanna point your users to r2library.com. Um, certainly we'll talk about some other ways um, to enhance discoverability as we go throughout this demo. Um, right now we're looking at the public access page. If you land here, um, you're not authenticating. So if this is where your users are going, um, they're not going into your collection. You either have to log in as an administrator, um, your patrons may have username and password, but if you have your IPs or your proxy or however that um, you're authenticating, um, Athens, they should, should never land on this page. This is really a public access page. Once they log in, they'll be able to um, see your collection. I have just logged in. Um, I'm logging in as an administrator. When you log in as an administrator, you have this admin tab. Your patrons, however, will not see that tab when they authenticate to your collection. They will see the tab navigation, of course, the quick search box, um, advanced search options, and the screen um, as you have set it to be displayed. Um, this is the browse page. You can see here, um, I have my collection set to browse by discipline. Um, I have, a, and when you're on trial, I do recommend this because um, if you are looking at it by title, it's really um, hard to navigate through 5,000 titles on the platform. Um, so this is the screen that your users will authenticate to. Um, just before I get deeper into the demo, I do want to do a quick overview of our purchase model. Um, I've had a lot of questions this week about how R2 works. Um, right now, if you're on trial, you have three concurrent users of every um, ebook within the collection. If you have um, enabled the um, OER resources, the free ebooks, those have unlimited access and those are also accessed and co-mingling with your um, resources that you have on trial. If you're an active R2 digital library customer, in other words, you purchase something or you have an active patron-driven acquisition collection, again, the OER resources are available um, at unlimited number. Um, when you purchase individual eBooks on the R2 digital library, you purchase them by the concurrent user. So you pay once and you have access to them forever. We are not a subscription model, um, so you pay um, an individual price for each ebook. The publisher set the retail pricing for the content. Um, you can see all of that information on the admin side. You can curate your collection based on your needs. A lot of customers will combine um, purchased resources along with patron-driven acquisition collections, um, which will expand your offering to your customers. The only um, annual and reoccurring fee is the maintenance fee which includes um, hosting archived content, all of your collaboration tools, um, workflow integration such as Mark Records, um, images, multimedia, and um, all of those things. We have never increased our maintenance fee. It is waived in the first year and assessed at the anniversary of your first purchase. Okay, so I'm going to get into um, a little bit of the platform here. You can see here we have a message up right now for COVID um 19 linking out to the um, nlm you have control of this branding um, on the platform so you can add your logo and you can also update and change your message as frequently as you would like um, along the left nav here you do have your um, you can control how you browse and also how you look at practice area we often see um, 
students or practitioners that like to link right into the practice area to see what is available um, within their disciplines. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are optimized for health sciences. I'm going to throw a search term into um, the search box here. MI is myocardial infarction. You can see that um, the platform recognizes that. We are um, designed for health sciences. We use the MeSH Metathesaurus to index all of the relevant terms within the content. And you can see that we have returned results across publishers. Um, we bring you a section of content or chapter level information depending upon the book. And you can take a look and see what you're going to link out to prior to doing that. Um, you know, we are specialized. You'll never get Michigan when you type in MI. We do normalize all of those health sciences terms. Um, you can see here that the platform keeps track of your search term. Um, right now, I'm defaulting to active resources. So those would be in print ebooks. So there are 36,000 results here for myocardial infarction. That's a lot. No one probably really wants to look through all of those. Um, you can also include archived content. Um, I should mention on the R2 Digital Library, when you purchase a resource and the um, resource, the ebook becomes quote unquote out of print or previous edition, um, it becomes archived status within R2. You always retain access to that content as long as you're active on the platform. How that content acts with your collection is really up to you. You can have it commingled, or as I do, I have it separated. Um, the larger your collection, sometimes it makes sense to just return those active results. Um, but again, we know how important it is to have access to that archived information. So in one click, you can um, include that in your search. We have a lot of different filters here along the left navigation. Um, we know you as librarians, you understand how to search, but your end users um, often don't. So we give them a lot of options. Um, they can look by book title or chapter title or just for a section of content. Um, we're image rich in the R2 Digital Library. We have close to 4 million images, um, which is really important in health sciences, as is video content. Um, a lot of visual learners out there, so we do support um, multimedia. Um, practice area, I mentioned earlier, but we often see the patrons wanting to um, link out and see exactly what's available for their practice area or their specific discipline. So you can you know, really refine your search results um, on the platform using some of these filters. Um, since I mentioned video, I'm going to go ahead and show you some um, how the video works. So you can see there were six results for a video for myocardial infarction um, on our platform. Um, I can, again, see across different publishers um, what is available. And in one click, I can link out and get right to video. Um, you can see how this video um, displays on the screen. So it is really um, a nice feature. And it is really one of our most popular um, features on the platform. I mentioned earlier that we use MeSH to um, index all of the relevant medical terms, um, and those are hyperlinked throughout the content. So you can see I selected aorta, and I've launched a new search here. Um, again, across the platform, across different publishers, you can see here Springer Nature, Lippincott Williams and Wilkins, um, et cetera. So I have launched a search um, across all of these different resources for relevant discussions on aorta. And again, um, you have all of those filters available here um, if you wanted to further refine this search. So um, it's just one of the great things about R2 is that we do bring this content to work together um, as a database, uh, much like you do with your um, journal information. So I'm going to go ahead and link out and show you a reading pane. We looked at some video. This is now um, a section of content within uh, one of the eBooks. Um, I should have mentioned earlier, when you're browsing and searching on the platform, you can have as many users as you like browsing and searching. It's not until they actually link into a resource that they are encumbering one of your concurrent users. So at this point, I would be um, taking up that concurrent user. During your trial, you have three. If, if Once you make a purchase, um, we recommend you start with one and see how um, that does for you. If you get a lot of turn away, you can always add another concurrent user. Um, but this would um, be 
using one of your concurrent users. So you can see here how clean and easy it is to take a look at the page. You have images here. Um, you can direct link to an image. Um, and as you go through, you can see that we have captured the references. We capture the PubMed IDs. So in one click, you can link out. And again, you can use a link resolver. Um, it's one of the ways that we bring together this um, secondary and primary source material um, within the R2 digital library platform. So I do want to show you um, when you are within a section of content, we have a lot of tools that are, are really um, great and end uh, users um, appreciate. So you can print a section of content. You can email um, a section of content. And the nice thing about emailing this page is that it's an HTML um, capture of this page. So all of the images, all, everything will go within the email. Um, this is definitely a student favorite. You can export your citation and you can select the format um, and you can have those um, at your fingertips. You can save a bookmark to a section. Um, you can save the references from within this section. And um, the last one is creating a deep link to a section of content. And this is really a hallmark of the R2 Digital Library um, because you can embed this link anywhere. If you're using course management software, um, if you are in a hospital and you're using electronic medical records, you can embed that link in a LibGuide um, and it will take your um, patron, they'll authenticate and it will take them right into this section of content. So creating these links right to a section of content is definitely one of the most popular tools that we have um, on the platform. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple more things. Um, I mentioned that we use MeSH to tag all of those index terms, drug names, diseases. So um, in one click, you can go into this index and you can um, find relevant information on any drug name, disease, or topic that is covered within the eBooks that are part of your collection. This is dynamic. So based on your collection, once you purchase, this will definitely link into any of your holdings. If you um, obviously during your trial you have access to all of them, um, once you purchase or have PDA, those will work the same and you will have access to all of that information here. Um, you have all these filters again um, to further refine that search as you need to. Now um, I mentioned earlier authentication using um, an IP or proxy or, or Athens, however you're authenticating. Um, but one of the things that we do enable and that you could set up in your profile is you can um, allow your patrons to set up a username and password of their own, which would provide them 24 seven access and also provides them access to this my R2 section. If they don't have a username and password, you certainly can use these tools, um, but they will only be good from session to session. So if you log in with the username and password and you as administrators, when you log in, you can save things to your R2. So here's that bookmark I just created. Um, in one click, it would take me right back out to that section of content. Um, the deep link that I created to this resource, you can see here, can export and embed that and you can save them over time. Um, I mentioned how image rich we are. You can see here, there are a lot of different um, images that I've saved over time. And again, these can be exported and used. Um, they come with the copyright information, which is great. So your users don't have to worry about that. Um, and again, you can link right out to them. Same thing for your references. Um, you can export and use those. Um, this is definitely helpful during research or writing a paper. You have all this information right at your fingertips. So um, as an admin, you have your email preferences here where you can go in and um, look at the emails that you're receiving from the R2 Digital Library. So my R2 is great. It, it is definitely um, a handy tool for your patrons. It's a nice place for you as a librarian if you're doing research or finding um, specific readings. Um, you can create folders and keep um, track of all of the information that you have from the R2 Digital Library right on the platform. Much like you do in print, we enable reserve shelf capabilities um, on the R2 Digital Library. So this is another dynamic feature. If, if you're looking at your trial and you say, huh, I don't see the reserve shelf tab, 
um, it's because you have not set up any reserve shelves on the admin side. So this is something that I'll show you when we flip over to the administrative features. Um, but you have the ability to create these reserve shelves for your readers. You can create as many as you like, um, and you can make them specific for your users. So, so um, using this reserve shelf is a great way to, um, again, enhance discoverability for your collection. So you can um, embed a link to a reserve shelf right into a LibGuide. So if you're creating a reading list, you can capture this URL and again, um, embed it in a LibGuide or put it in course management software. Um, the other great thing about our reserve shelf capability is that you can um, link out. So you can link out to articles, you can embed um, journal information here, and it's just another way to um, create discoverability for your holdings. So that's a little bit about the patron facing side. Um, if, you, if you have a demo, we definitely recommend that you know you get on and, and play around with it and, and take a look at all of the different things that we have to offer here for your patrons. Okay, I'm gonna flip over now to the administrative side of the platform and um, show you just a few quick things. Um, I did do an admin demo the other day and we do do them um, pretty frequently. Um, so from time to time, you'll get an email that we are hosting demos. And certainly if you have any questions, um, we recommend that you reach out to us. So when you log in as an administrator, you are going to um, see this dashboard and the dashboard will give you information about your collection, your PDA collection, any special offers that we have, um, a lot of good information there. We will also email you um, that dashboard monthly so that you can see your most used resources, et cetera. Um, your profile, this is where you set up some of the um, features that I discussed when I was doing the demo. So if you want your archive titles included, um, if you wanna display non-purchase titles to the table of contents level, um, your access type, this is an important one. Um, if you have IPs loaded, you wanna make sure you have some sort of IP validation selected. Um, and if you're allowing username and passwords, we will help you set that up initially, but you always have the option to come in and change that. Um, there are a lot of different things here. Um, if you're using Athens or OCLC, you do have the ability to come in and add that information right here from your profile. System preferences is where you would load your IP ranges or your proxy IP. And again, we help you set that up, but in one click, you can go in and edit that. We know these are changing a lot. Um, so you have that ability to check them and also add them right here from the um, institution management section of the R2 Digital Library. Um, I mentioned branding and I showed you what that looked like on the homepage, how you can um, add your logo and messaging. Um, here is where your logo would go. Our R2 logo would move over to the right. And this is where you can come in and add messaging. So some libraries like to change that weekly or daily. Some add it once and, and don't touch it again. It's really up to you, um, but you do have that ability and we do recommend that you load your logo. Um, user management is where you can see who has access to the platform and if you're set up, um, what role you're set up as. So you will see yourself there as an institutional administrator and you can always add new users. Um, if you're giving your patrons the um, opportunity to set up a username and password, you can see them here, um, but you do not have to administrate that. If they forget their password, they just um, use the forget password feature on the platform and the platform will email them. But you do have access to see that. So that's a little bit about um, how you manage your collection. Collection management is where you can view your collection and make purchases um, on the platform. Purchase eBooks is where you can see everything that's available on the platform um, and you can see what your collection looks like. You can look at it by publisher. You can upload a list of ISBNs to see what we have using this express checkout. Um, when you are in trial, purchase eBooks is where you see the whole collection. Once you start making purchases, my R2 collection is where you will see what you have purchased. So here on this trial account, I've purchased 14 eBooks um, and this will tell me when I purchased it, if it was part of my patron-driven acquisition or not, and the date that the purchase was made. 
okay? Um, but collection management, um, especially during trial, this is where you can come in to um, take a look at everything that we have. We do have a nice sort and fil filter tool. So you can come in and look at ebooks by practice area, by discipline. Um, we have curated all of these collections. So if you don't know where to start, this is a good place to start once you're off your trial. Um, duties core titles and duties core title essentials. We work very closely with duties. We have one of the largest collections available um, for duties core titles. Um, so you can come in and filter and sort and look around. Um, this is where you can also see pricing. So you see your retail price, less your 10% discount, and we do have um, shopping cart functionality. So when you add something to your collection, it adds it to a shopping cart, which I'm doing here, I think. And then at any time you can go in and view your cart and check out. So the nice thing about the R2 Digital Library is that when you're making purchases, you purchase, you add them to your shopping cart, check out, and you have immediate access to that content. Um, when you are here under purchase ebooks, we will let you know. Um, here, I just added this to the shopping cart. So it's, it's going to tell me I do have that in the shopping cart. Um, if I have not purchased it and it's not part of my PDA collection, this is where I can add to my collection or my PDA collection. Um, I own this, but perhaps I want to purchase another license, another concurrent user. I can add one to the shopping cart. So you have a lot of um, options here. Um, we make it pretty transparent. Um, you also can use this toolbar at any time um, and export this to Excel. Because again, there are a lot of eBooks here. Um, and you can also export Mark. So we, we do give access to Mark records. You can export Mark from several different places within the platform, from your order history, from your shopping cart, if you're looking. Um, at a list of titles, you always have this toolbar. You can also email this if you'd like to. Um, so that's a little bit about collection management. When you have a collection, you can view it under My R2, as I showed you. If you have a PDA collection, you can view your PDA collection and your usage on PDA. And again, the patron-driven acquisition, um, I'll go over that really quickly here. That enables you to open up content. It works as if you own it. Your patrons have three session level access to that content. Um, on the third access, it moves to the shopping cart and it's mediated, so there's no automatic purchase. So if you're in trial right now, you have access to everything. Um, at the close of your trial, when you're making your initial purchases, um, you may be purchasing a few titles, but you can augment that with as many titles as you want with um, patron-driven acquisition. Um, we do have auto replenishment on the platform. Um, we call it PDA Wizard, but this is where you can um, have any title that you have purchased or any title that you have put on PDA can be auto replenished. So you can see here we have some set up um, and essentially you know any new addition to any purchased or PDA resources will automatically be added to PDA. So you don't have to keep up with anything that we're adding to the platform. The platform will automatically do that for you. So I definitely recommend um, if whether you're a PDA customer or you have an active collection that you take advantage of this because that will ensure your patrons are never um, without the latest edition. And again, it's risk-free because it's putting it on your PDA. You're not making that purchase. Um, the nice thing about the patron-driven acquisition is that you may have a collection and you may have some resources that were only accessed once or twice, but you haven't paid for them. Um, until they actually have a third session level access and you decide to purchase. So it's just really a nice way to get access to some content. Um, and we'd rather have that content out there and being discovered and used um, as I'm sure you would. Um, special offers is just what it sounds like and order history. Um, you can always look at your purchase history. Um, I mentioned reserve shelf earlier. I showed you what that looked like on the patron facing side. When you are an admin, if you hit that reserve shelf, this is where you can create a reserve shelf, create the name, put your description in, add the resources that you want. Once you save that, um, you'll have access to that reserve shelf and that reserve shelf tab will appear for your patrons. Um, we have featured titles and featured publishers. Um, we do have a user role called expert reviewer. Um, we have information on that. Um, if you're interested, essentially that it, will enable you to assign faculty as expert reviewers. They can come in and look at content that you haven't purchased. 
Um, if you're on trial right now, there's no real point in that um, because they're seeing everything anyway. But once you move to an active status, a lot of faculty like to be able to come in and browse um, content. They cannot make purchases, but they can make recommendations to you. Um, I should mention we do have um, free ebooks. I mentioned it earlier. We have 29 OER resources, um, a lot of good content here. Um, these are unlimited access, they are free. You will never be charged for them. Um, and I definitely recommend um, right now on trial, you have access to them. Um, but if you are a PDA customer or an active customer, you should definitely add these to your collection. Um, we do give the option for an OER only collection, and then you will never be assessed a maintenance fee. Um, you can just open these free books and have them in your library. Um, Merck Manual is part of that. And especially right now with everything going on, really important content to have um, out there and available for your patrons. So um, definitely, um, we call it you know, free resources. This is where you find all of the OER books. It's a special collection um, on the platform. You can also get to it from the sort and filter um, tab. Okay, I'm running down on time, so just quickly, um, we do have reporting on the R2 Digital Library. You can access this in real time for your collection. Really great during your trial period to take a look at how the content is being utilized. Um, you can sort it by how many um, content retrievals or accesses there have been. Um, you can come in and look at your cost per use, you know, how many times a title has been accessed, um, et cetera. So um, you have access to um, application, the platform level stats, your resource usage, um, which you can run at any time. Once you have a report that you like, you can save and schedule that report right here, and then it will email to you so you can have it sent right to your inbox. So if you wanna look at your usage, you know, maybe you're on trial now through May, you could save and have that um, scheduled to run and, and be sent to you. Um, just a quick note, we are counter compliant. So if you're using counter in your library, um, you can access the counter ebook reports and export those and then you'll be looking at your resources apples to apples um, if you're looking at your other ebooks um, and using counter for that okay finally um, we do have some great information here a lot of what i covered i know you'll try to remember it um, we have it right here we have these how-to videos so you can just link out they're a minute or two long um, you know, how to run a re resource usage report, how to search and browse to purchase books, how to get your persistent URLs, um, how to export MARC, and so on. So we have a lot of um, quick information here. Um, definitely recommend you take advantage. And again, it's right here under system information, how to videos. And we do have a lot of outreach. So if you're new to the R2 Digital Library, um, you've just started a trial, this quick start guide is something that I would definitely recommend making available to your patrons. It really just goes through browsing and searching and a little bit about what they see when they're looking at the R2 Digital Library. Um, we do have these available, so if you'd like them, I know most people are remote right now, so having this PDF is probably more useful. Um, really good to grab this and download it and send it out to your faculty, just so they're aware of um, what you've made available to them or if you're in a hospital to um, your hospital patrons. We do have some PowerPoint demonstrations that really just walk through what I just did. Um, this admin user guide, this is great for you as the administrators, you can download this. It goes through just about everything I just talked about. When you're ready to start a PDA, we have the same thing for PDA and expert reviewer. Um, if you're looking to um, have expert reviewers in faculty or in physicians. And then also, the PDA wizard, which is the auto replenishment. Um, and lastly, I should say we do have our logo here. So grab that and embed it and just direct it to r2library.com if you're on trial or if you're active. And that way your users will know where they're going. And finally, we do have some technical documentation. So if you're trying to configure your easy proxy or federated search integration um, or using a trusted URL, all of that is here for you.